Okay, let's keep going. Let's look at the body cavity. Your bodies can be divided into two big cavities, dorsal and ventral. So that's the dorsal cavity, that's the ventral cavity. Your dorsal cavity can be divided into the cranial and vertebral cavity. Both of them, uh, they protect very important organs inside your brain, your spinal cord. You cannot afford to let them get hurt. So two cavities in the dorsal. In your ventral part can be divided into the thoracic, abdominal, pelvic. They are divided by the diaphragm. And abdominal pelvic can be divided into the abdominal and pelvic cavity. There is no physical separation of between the abdominal and pelvic. So you have to look at the pelvic bone. So this very low area, that's the pelvic cavity. All the other are abdominal. So these are, these are the cavities. Uh, cranial, okay, is defined by the skull, very tough bones. And you have very important organ inside, that's your brain. Your vertebral cavity, uh, this is inside your vertebral cavity. So we will, when we talk about the uh, the, the, the bones, uh, we'll talk about this. This is called the foramen. So every hole in anatomy is called the foramen. And that's, that's the vertebral cavity. They protect the spinal cord. Now we are in the ventral cavity. So ventral cavity can be divided into the thoracic and abdominal pelvic. Abdominal pelvic, we talk about it, can be divided into the abdominal and the pelvic cavity. Now let's look at the thoracic. Thoracic cavity, inside you have the lungs and the heart. So on, on the lungs outside, you have a double membrane cover the lung. It's called the pleural cavity. And you have a double membrane cover the heart called the pericardial cavity. So inside the thoracic cavity, you have the pleural cavity. You have two lungs, so actually you have two pleural cavities. And you have one heart, so you have one pericardial cavity. And the mid that's the space. This is empty space for the heart to stay. Okay, so that's the uh, ventral cavity. I'll leave the reading to you. In your lung, and you have the pleural cavity, it's a double membrane cover it. It's a double membrane structure, so think about your lung, it's like your fist, and you squeeze your fist into the balloon, now this balloon becomes a double membrane. One cover your fist, one cover the outside, and this is your pleural cavity. So you have one layer touch the lung, the other layer touch the outside. And the, the, the one touch the lung is called the visceral, visceral layer. And the one touch the outside called parental layer. So you have two layers. It's created by the serous membrane. Serous membrane is the membrane with uh, liquid. So the liquid is like you put the water into two glasses. So it's very difficult to separate those uh, two glasses if you add one drop of water. So the, the serous membrane, it, it serves the function. This water will glue. Uh, the lung to the visceral layer and the per parental layer touch the ribs so when you breathe you extend ribs and it automatically pull the pleural cavity out and you will pull the lung out so your lung is actually a plastic bag uh, the the breathing function is the pump is not the lung the pump is the the muscles the diaphragm and uh, intercostal muscle the muscles between your ribs so we talk about the pleural cavity, double membrane. You have two lungs, so you have two. Now let's look at the pericardial. You only have one heart, so you only have one pericardial cavity. And still two layers. The one touch the heart, called the visceral pericardium, and the one touch the outside, called parental pericardium. Still a double membrane, a serous membrane cavity. And this slide shows you those double membrane structure. There's a very small space between them. Uh, in the heart, uh, when we talk about the heart edema, it's, it's not the water accumulated inside the heart. Inside the heart, you have blood. And the heart edema is the water, body fluid accumulated inside here, pericardial cavity. Uh, apparently, when you have too much, think about your heart covered by the fluid. So it's difficult for the heart to expand, and that's why they have to drain the water out if they have the uh, heart edema. And these are the pleural membrane covered the... Uh, the, the lungs, so still a double membrane structure. 
in AP2, when your instructor talk about, talk about pneumothorax, accidentally puncture the lung, and if you it puncture the pleural cavity, and air can flow in. So when the air can flow in, it can shrink the lung. It's gonna press the lung, so it causes the lung shrinkage. So that's your uh, transverse section to show you the two pleural cavity and the, the, the center part they take the, the heart out, so it's called the mid -ostinate. That's the area for the heart. Okay, so this size explains uh, pretty much everything I just explained. I'll leave it to you. So the pleural cavity, double membrane touch the lung, I'll leave it to you. Okay, now we go to the abdominal pelvic cavity. This area, in this area you have a lot of organs, most of them digestive function. And we don't have every organ have double membrane coverage. So they, they, they take a double membrane and put all the organs inside and put that double membrane in here. This is how they do it. So this show you all the organ there. So abdominal pelvic cavity can be divided into the abdominal and the lower part uh, where your pelvic bone is located. That's the pelvic cavity. So you like your bladder and reproductive organs are there. So you have the thoracic cage, ab abdominal cavity, pelvic cavity. And the double membrane covered your organs in abdominal pelvic cavity called peritoneum peritoneal membrane. It's still a serous membrane. It's a double membrane. So the one touch the inside organ called the visceral peritoneum. The one touch the outside called the parental peritoneum. And the cavity, this double membrane cavity, similar to the lungs to the heart. Uh, this time it's all the organs, one, cap, uh, one cavity. The cavity called peritoneal cavity. So this show you the sagittal sections. So all the organs there. Your abdominal pelvic cavity is big, and you have a lot of organs inside. So they decide to divide them into nine different regions and four different quadrants. So you have to know each region's name, and in your lab, uh, you need to study those names. I can point the one to ask you, what's this region? So this right lumbar region. What's this region? This will be the left iliac region. So you need to know those nine regions. Or I can give you an organ, like your uh, a, your bladder is in what region? It's in the hypogastric region. So you need to know those big organs and what region they located. So you can divide them into nine different regions. And each one has a name. But for some organ that are too big, like your liver, your liver cover more than one region. So it's better to use a bigger uh, section, and we call them quadrants. So we divide them into four different quadrants. Like if I ask you, your liver, most of it is in what quadrants? So it actually cover more than one, but most of it is stay in the right upper quadrant, R-U-Q. Uh, I sometimes I have students say upper right. This that's not correct. You have spelled correctly right upper. I I memorize it as R goes before U. So right upper quadrants. So I can give you a an organ. Ask you what is in what quadrant. Your appendix is in what quadrant. It's in your right lower quadrants. So you have four quadrants, nine regions. And this part they go hand in hand with your lab. So you need to know those big terminology. Like your wrist, what's the official name of your wrist? Well, we call the couple, right? So you have the couple tunnel syndrome, this, this, this here. And what's the, your official name of your forehead? That's called the frontal. So you need to memorize those big words. And you're gonna use those big words for the whole semester, and not just that, also for two classes, AP1 and AP2. So when we talk about the bone, uh, the the head, the bone cover your forehead is called frontal bone, and when we talk about the brain, the brain can be divided into different lobe L O B E, and when we say the in in your forehead the brain area is called the frontal lobe. When we talk about the the blood vessel, 
your armpit is called axillary. So the blood vessel, the artery goes through your armpit. You learned that in AP2, it's called the axillary artery. So we, we will keep using those terms in, in the two semesters. And when you go to the nursing field, you still need to use those terms. It's just in the beginning, you feel like, well, a lot of material. Yes, you do need to spend time uh, memorize those terminology. And I will point to one area, ask you, what's the official name of this area? What's the official name of that area? So you need to be able to spell them correctly. And this is the, uh, the posterior, posterior view uh, of those body parts and their, their terminology. Okay, that's it.